All right, time for some friendly fire. Uh, let's do it with Shamika Michelle Whitlock and Shamika, friendly fire. Shamika, welcome back to the show. Uh, glad to have you. Uh, I've got an interesting topic for you that I, I needed a woman's take on. Uh, Tyler Perry, the Hollywood movie producer, has made another interesting comment that has sparked a lot of conversation on social media, sparked a lot of conversation among black people. He has basically suggested that black women need to get comfortable with dating black men who make less money than them. Anyway, let's let Tyler Perry speak for himself and then we'll get your reaction. Listen, a, a lot of women, especially black women, and mm -hmm. I might get in trouble for saying this, but I will. In the in in our society right now, mm -hmm. black women are making a lot more money for the most part than yeah. black men, right? There are a lot of black men who are successful, but for the most part, black women are making the money. So you, if you can find love, if that man works, you know, at whatever job, mm -hmm. and is a good man and is good to you mm -hmm. and honors and honors the house and honors his wife and does what he can mm -hmm. because his his gift may not be your gift exactly that is okay mm -hmm. that's not somebody who's beneath you yeah that's somebody who came to love you at your worth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right yeah and as long as he's secure in himself to mm -hmm. know that yep she makes most of the money all i can pay is the light bill as long as she's comfortable enough to say i'm gonna cover the mortgage and all the other stuff you can the light bill baby you can take me to dinner every now and then mm -hmm. that is fine yeah that's fine mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but that's so hard for a lot of people to take in because that means, no, 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 I need somebody to, who is, <laughs> I need, I, they need to make five times more and I got to have, the, I got to have, well, you uh -huh. keep, but go on, keep, keep, go on, keep your list, baby. Yeah. God, God bless you. Hope it happens. Go on, keep your list. <laughs> but when you talk about just someone to love you and support yes. you, I, I know people who have, who, whose men can't touch what they make. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But when you see them together, that love, that support, that that I got you, babe, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing. <sighs> There's part of what he said that I don't have a problem with, and then there's part of what he said that I just, just completely reject. And it's like we're supposed to get comfortable with the fact that hey, black men are going to be less successful career-wise and as providers than black women. Hey, just get comfortable with this, let's normalize this. Black women, uh, you know, and, and to me the message should be like, hey, how did things get so upside down that black, black men are earning far less money than black women and black men have been emasculated in their homes and they can't be leaders because this society has been rigged in a way that the black woman is far outpacing the black man. The, the conversation should be, how did we get here and how do we fix it? Not how do we make the best of this bad situation? I agree with both of you, Jason. Um, actually, I see your take, like, because yes, how did we get here? But in the meantime, I understand what Tyler is saying. If you want to be in a relationship, you may have to accept the fact that you're going into this making more money than your spouse. And that's okay if he's actually doing other things, if he's treating you right. We have a lot of black women who are just simply caught up in materialism, period. They say they don't even want a man unless he is six feet tall or makes six figures. That's the thing. And I can honestly tell them, although this was 20 something years ago, when I got with my ex-husband, he didn't even have a checking account. But by the time we divorced, he was making almost half a million dollars a year. Why? Because I understood my role and I was his help me. I was his support. You know, I was his fulfillment. You know, I helped to do those things that he wanted to accomplish in life. And there are a lot of women who are coming to the table, not even wanting to build a man, not even wanting to help him with his dreams so that they can get to the point that he's making more and doing what he's supposed to do in life. So I understand what you're saying, and I do think we have to take a hard look at why we're in this place and 
Um, you know, all the way down to education. We know there are a lot of men that aren't going to college, so they may not have these college degrees that the women have. But also, women are not willing to actually build with a man anymore. You know, our grandparents and great-grandparents, they didn't have a problem building together. And now we don't do that. We come in wanting to live this great lifestyle that we see people live on social media, these celebrities wanting these handbags and the designer shoes. You have to come together and be willing to build, be willing to play your role, be willing to support, assist, fulfill, and satisfy. Be that help me. And a, a lot of women aren't willing to do that. Love all the second part of what you're saying, but I want to ask you this. Let, is it, can you have a successful, sustainable marriage if the woman is the primary breadwinner and the man is the secondary breadwinner? Is it, can that be sustained? Not on an individual basis, but just in mass, in general, is that a sustainable relationship structure? I don't think it's a sustainable relationship structure. Um, thinking about just myself, I could do it. Uh, you know, initially, I could take that, you know, uh, man and really help him with the things that he wants to do. Would I be willing, though, to be the breadwinner for the entirety of our relationship? I don't think I would. I think there, I've said it before, I have a little shark in me. It really depends on his personality if I would start to take advantage of that. And so I don't think that in mass, that's a great way that we should actually be pushing society because I think that a lot of women, when it comes to power, would be power hungry and power happy. And it just would not be a good thing to try and sustain throughout society. So no, I don't think that's something that we should push. I think we should really be pushing traditional family values. And that means everything all the way around. Not gonna call this person out by name because I love them too much but I had a family member very close to me, uh, very close to me, who is, you know, was a high-end executive. She was, is a high-end executive breadwinner. And, and she made the statement about her husband when they, they were having problems. I just need a Stedman. If he would just play his role, if he would be a Stedman. And I said, I almost called her name, uh, but I said, look here, baby girl, <laughs> you might as well have just said, if I could just get him to transition and be gay. I go, that's how that sounded to, to him, when you saying that to him. Th this is not going to work. Th that's not in his nature. That's not what he's going to do. It's just not gonna work, and sure enough, uh, they're in divorce court. I, I just don't think it's sustainable. D does that mean the woman should give up her career? No, but it, it, it does mean that we should be examining, why did this happen to us? Because it's not commonplace in the white woman or Asian community or Latino community. It's only really commonplace with us. And we should be, how did this happen? Maybe this was by design. Maybe someone wanted to emasculate and, and undermine the leverage, leadership, and power of the black man. Maybe people looked at the, the 1950s and 60s and looked at what the black man accomplished in terms of moving us forward and said, never again, never again will we be dealing with a Malcolm X or a Martin Luther King. You know what, we're gonna deal with Kamala Harris and Stacey Abrams and, and uh, Michelle Obama. We wanna deal with them because you know what? We can handle them. That's what I think happen and we should be questioning that. Yeah, and I also think we're so materialistic. You know, 
you have to work if you want all of the finer things in life and you have to have this job that makes a lot of money. A lot of women back in the day, they were content with being able to eat and have a roof over their head and have clothes to wear and being able to take care of their, child their children. For a lot of women now, that's not enough. They look at these celebrities and they want the, the luxury cars in the driveway and they want all of the designer clothes and things like that. Sometimes you have to sacrifice and not have those things to just have happiness. But if you're running after materialism, you have to work and you have to make a lot of money and a lot of women are just short-sighted in that and so then when it comes to finding this man he may not be living that type of materialistic lifestyle or he hasn't gotten to that point and then we're just looking down on him like he's nothing like he has no type of potential they'll think this man has no type of drive and that's not always the case this man just may be a simple man ready to really love you and treat you the way you desire to be treated but you've already crossed him out because he can't provide this certain lifestyle for you i think that we really need to stop and check our role as women because if we're here on this earth to be help meet to men and to raise the next generation we're not even focused on that if you're working 10 and 12 hours a week you cannot focus on taking care of your children the way they did need to be taken care of and the way we need to focus on them and your household you just cannot do that and a lot of women feel like they can but i think that's why we see so many kids going astray because there's nobody there to raise them they're being raised by the internet, they're being raised by TV, they're being raised by the thugs in the street that they hang out with because mama's at work being this boss bitch. And honestly, if you're really that much of a boss, the corporation at your home is falling apart. You're a terrible CEO because it's just not turning out the way it's supposed to. So I think a lot of women need to really check themselves and say, why am I here? What is my purpose? I don't understand how a woman can carry a baby for 40 weeks and then feel like some other woman who doesn't have any kids is better equipped to raise that child because you want to toss that baby in daycare so that you can go back to work. That makes no sense to me. If God put it in you, raise the baby. And so I think a lot of women are just off period. And so we've seen this shift, we've seen this flip, and this is why we're so upside down. And you're right, we're the only group of people that are actually really fighting with that issue because we're so out of order. Thank you, Shamika. Great job as always. Those of you watching, if you enjoyed this content, leave a comment. Leave a message, uh, help us fight the algorithm. And if you really wanna do something, support one of our great sponsors, like Bank On Yourself. If you wanna take control of your retirement income, Bank On Yourself is a great way to do it. Eliminate some of these tax burdens and turning over control of your retirement. You can control it with Bank On Yourself. Go to bankonyourself.com slash fearless. Use my promo code fearless. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Like what you saw? Hit that like button, subscribe, and check out the full episode by clicking the link below.